What are labels looking for in an artist in 2019? In this video, I'm actually going to talk about the three or four things labels look for in an artist. Let's talk about it. A huge role model of mine, Grant Cardone. This guy has a video on how to get your dream job. I'll link it in the description for anyone who wants to check it out after this video. But in it, he talks about the 12 steps you need to take in order to land the job of your dreams. And one of them is in the interview, you talk about how you're going to raise the revenue of the company. And he really stresses this. He says the one thing companies give most of a fuck about is money. It's straight up revenue. The biggest companies, the ones I've studied, like Apple, Amazon, and Google, and Alphabet, these companies are heavily, heavily focused on consumers and what exactly it is that they want. But the thing is, like, those are fucking not record labels. So, um, if record labels were to adapt the ways those companies kind of approach things and think about everything, I mean, the way I'm approaching YouTube is similar to that vein of thought processes, so I guess I'm experimenting with that idea. <laughs> but by the time this video drops, I will have moved from Westchester, Pennsylvania to Atlanta. The reasons for which are a topic for another video. I dropped a few months ago. I'll link that in the description too. But as a result of this one, could say that I have been in contact with a plug or multiple plugs and this only makes sense you might be surprised to find out how many heads it just flies the fuck over but what i've heard from them is that labels want money people say the music industry is really big i think they only say that in terms of population in terms of money it's actually fucking puny bitch pussy number shit it's only 15.7 billion dollars the richest person on the planet himself is 10 times that so labels want money because there is a lot of scarcity coming up as a result of this and i don't think again a lot of artists seem to realize it's important so if you want to get signed labels want to know for sure they want that key confidence in an artist that you will be able to deliver no matter what no matter how much money they put into you that they will always be able to get a disgusting return on investment from you the bigger the returns the better for them and the better for them the better for you perhaps depending on the deal but that's why you get a get a lawyer for this shit or at least have someone go over these contracts with and or for you things like this and building a fan base are some of the big big reasons russ got a higher percentage deal with columbia records than michael jackson now i work closely and often with a manager and an artist he refers to me as a business partner and as he puts his time into the field this guy is a fucking networking machine he's kind of like me but you know he's like an extrovert so he's always talking to someone important i'm just always creating something important most likely at some point he's talking to them about what i'm creating i tend to come up in conversation but when he is in label meetings and he's been in label meetings with everyone from def jam to quality control to sony he pays a lot of attention to what exactly it is that gets an artist signed a good handful of months ago he got an artist signed for 200 $150,000. This dude I'm working with is 23. I'll link the artist's music in the description if I can find it. <laughs> I don't normally look into these artists. I mean, that's not exactly my job, although doing it would probably help me out to some extent. So when an artist gets signed, typically, apparently these labels don't even fucking act to listen to their music. They straight up ask one thing. And again, I'm very, very sure that there are labels who do ask to listen to the music, but like they straight up ask for one thing and one thing only. But that primarily says so much about an artist. That one thing I'll talk about in just a second. But until then, when he asked a person why they signed that artist for 200, for a quarter million dollars, who by the way was like younger than me, I'm 21 right now. Like the number one reason, you know, typical salesman always looking to get that answer, not just ask the question. The person said, you know, it's really because he has such a great personality. Artists also underestimate the power of this, a great personality. 85% of the success you achieve in your field, no matter what it is, will probably come from your communication skills, who you know, and the quality of the relationships that you make with them. People are like, Sam, how the fuck do you know all this? Well, this was said by a man named Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie wrote multiple books in the category of self-help. He's had multiple courses on the subject, and the third richest person on the fucking planet, the most legendary investor in the world ever, Warren Buffett, said that the greatest investment he made of all things, you would expect it to be like Coca-Cola or some shit. It was really a Dale Carnegie course. So a great personality is the key. It will propel you forward like nothing you would expect. I have probably never gotten shat on and dismissed by anyone after displaying a pleasant personality and easygoing conduct around other professionals inside and even outside of the music industry. I've worked a bit in plumbing and carpentry, in residential applications, commercial, and renovations. I swear, it makes a world of a difference. The number one thing is an EPK. The one thing these people are always like, okay, they all have, they have all these songs, but like, where's their EPK. What does an EPK stand for? EPK stands for the eloquent fucking of kangaroos. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. So much for professional conduct. <laughs> but again, it is in good humor, I guess. I'd say these things to the general public, but only for branding purposes. I'd never say them in a label meeting, unless these people are very
very familiar with my work, like these videos. It stands for electronic press kit. What is an electronic press kit, Sam? I mean, an electronic press kit is like a PDF file. It's a multiple page package of things that can and will display like here. This person has all the items an EPK needs. What are the items? All these questions. In the description, I'll link a video of mine that goes in depth about EPKs and what they need, why they're important, as well as the difference between an EPK and a website. The last thing is, I'm not 100% on this. Last time I checked, it's still valid information, but as the nature of the music industry and technology, social media, distribution, streaming platforms, as it all, for lack of a better word, tends to bend and take a new form as almost what seems like recurrently, these hard numbers, these minimal requirements, they tend to sort of liquidate from time to time as a result. And the importance of them is turned down to zero, what I like to call the bitch number. So I wanted to get that out of the way, but this last thing is called the standard of notoriety. This is a standard that shows how much these people are willing to take an artist in with them in terms of stats like hard numbers. Now, when I look at this list, considering the ways conversion rates work, I think it's extremely stupid. I think it's extremely shallow. I don't think it has any correlation whatsoever with an ROI to investors. And that's because one, a number may be a noun, but in the next 10 to 20 years, at the very least, the idea of a number will turn into a verb. And I urge you to keep watching my videos if you want to know what I mean by that. But to put it simply, there's so much more to ROI than just these numbers. There are numbers behind these numbers and numbers behind those numbers that you can extract, you can extrapolate the information from and convert the attention into money and labels sign artists and artists and countlessly flop and their careers go to shit and the labels lose so much money because of things like this. The importance of a standard of notoriety today may or may not be kind of skewed or kind of lowered for the reasons I just described and maybe even many more. The actual numbers themselves I may or may not talk about in one or more future videos. But that's my little list of things labels are looking for. What do you guys think? Does, what am I missing? Does it depend on the label? I'm sure it does. There's probably a lot of other shit I could have covered in this video. So I wanted to apologize for that and say that I may or may not also make another video about those in the future. Speaking of which, also let me know if you guys have any ideas you want me to talk about in future videos and I'll give you a shout out if and when I use them. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up. There are links at the bottom of the description of all my social media. Also at the bottom of the description, there are links to my new production kits where you can find all the hardware and software that I use to make music. If you buy any, I get a commission which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos for you guys. I made all the beats in this video. If you want to use them, you can find links to each one from first to last in the description or at samuel.nerf slash beats. Make sure to leave a like if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already. If you could turn on that little bell or receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find me everywhere and I'll see you then.